Hello, I'm Dr. Rhonda Souza, and this is my colleague, Dr. Stuart Speckler. We are both gastroenterologists at the Dallas VA Medical Center and the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center at Dallas. The editors of Gastroenterology have asked us to discuss our report entitled Gastroesophageal Reflux Might Cause Esophagitis Through a Cytokine-Mediated Mechanism Rather Than Caustic Acid Injury. Dr. Sousa and I have had a long-standing interest in gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD. The pathophysiology of GERD that all of us were taught in medical school is that reflux esophagitis develops when gastric juice refluxes from the stomach into the esophagus and the gastric juice inflicts a chemical burn on the esophageal mucosa. Well, we recently started using a rat model for reflux esophagitis in which we surgically connect the duodenum to the esophagus. That esophagoduodenostomy results in the free flow of gastric acid and duodenal contents into the esophagus. And not surprisingly, the rats develop very severe reflux esophagitis. But we were very surprised to learn that it can take a number of weeks to develop esophagitis in this model. Well, that doesn't make sense if reflux esophagitis is really the result of an acid burn. Chemical injuries develop immediately. If you spill battery acid on your hand, you don't have to wait a month to see the damage. So to explore this paradox, we performed a systematic study of the early histological events in the development of reflux esophagitis in rats after esophagoduodenostomy. Now think about what you would expect if reflux esophagitis is caused by the direct caustic effects of reflux gastric acid. That injury would start with the death of the surface epithelial cells of the esophagus. That acute chemical burn injury would evoke an acute inflammatory response with infiltration by the neutrophils that typically respond to acute injuries. The death of the surface cells would eventually cause proliferation of the basal cells, trying to replace the dead surface cells. And that basal cell proliferation would be manifested by basal cell hyperplasia. Now remember that basal cell hyperplasia is a characteristic histological finding of reflux esophagitis. And basal hyperplasia has always been assumed to be a proliferative response that's triggered by the death of the surface cells. Well, what we found in our animal model was exactly the opposite sequence of events. At day three after esophagoduodenostomy, there was no apparent damage to surface epithelial cells. And the only sign of esophageal inflammation was the appearance of T lymphocytes in the submucosa. Inflammation, predominantly comprising T lymphocytes, increased to reach significantly elevated levels in the lamina propria, which is under the epithelium, by week one, and the T lymphocytes didn't reach the epithelial layer itself until week three. Neutrophils weren't seen in any layer of the esophagus until day seven. Furthermore, we found that basal cell hyperplasia already was apparent by week one even though we didn't see the erosion of any surface cells until week four. So again, what we found was exactly the opposite of what we had been taught to expect in the development of reflux esophagitis. An acid burn model of injury would be expected to progress from the surface into the submucosa and to start with infiltration by neutrophils. Instead, what we found in our animal model was that reflux esophagitis starts as a lymphocytic infiltration in the submucosa that progresses to the mucosal surface. We didn't observe any loss of surface cells until four weeks after esophagoduodenostomy, but we saw basal cell hyperplasia within one week. So in this animal model, it's not the loss of surface cells that triggers the basal cell hyperplasia. The development of reflux esophagitis that we found in our systematic study of the rat esophagus after esophagoduodenostomy is not consistent with the prevailing concept of reflux esophagitis developing as the result of an acid burn. If caustic injury is not the primary mechanism underlying reflux esophagitis, then one alternative hypothesis is that gastroesophageal reflux triggers a cytokine-mediated immune response 
and it is that immune response that causes the esophageal injury. So we performed a number of in vitro experiments to explore that alternative concept that reflux esophagitis is a cytokine-mediated disorder. Our laboratory has developed a number of normal esophageal cell lines. These cell lines are not transformed, meaning they're not cancer cells. They are normal esophageal epithelial cells that can be maintained indefinitely in culture because we force them to express an enzyme called telomerase that enables the cells to replicate without limit. When we took those normal esophageal squamous epithelial cells and exposed them to an acidic bile salt solution, we found that they began to secrete large amounts of inflammatory cytokines, like interleukin-8, within two days. We then took the condition media from those cells which contains the cytokines that they secrete when they are exposed to acid and bile salts. And we found that the conditioned media caused a significant increase in the migration rates of T cells and neutrophils. So our in vitro studies show that when you expose esophageal squamous epithelial cells to acid and bile salts, those cells secrete cytokines that can cause inflammatory cells to migrate. Other investigators have demonstrated the secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines by esophageal epithelial cells in reflux esophagitis. But in most of those studies, it was not clear whether that cytokine secretion was a cause or an effect of the esophagitis. In other words, it's not clear whether inflammatory cells caused the epithelial cells to secrete cytokines. Since our epithelial cell cultures contain no inflammatory cells, it is clear that acid and bile salts alone can cause the epithelial cells to secrete inflammatory cytokines. We also performed immunohistochemical studies on the rat esophagus, and we found immunoreactivity for interleukin-8 in the esophageal epithelium within two weeks. This finding in vivo confirms the results of our in vitro experiments and shows that gastroesophageal reflux causes esophageal epithelial cells to produce inflammatory cytokines. So our studies support a new concept for the development of reflux esophagitis, in which the reflux of gastric juice stimulates esophageal squamous epithelial cells to secrete chemokines that attract inflammatory cells. And it's those inflammatory cells, not the acid, that ultimately damage the esophageal mucosa. It's not clear how faithfully our rat model recapitulates the human disease, Nevertheless, we are very excited by these findings, and we feel that this is a fruitful area for future research. We thank you today for listening to us.